So when you hear the words artificial intelligence, what's the first thing that comes into your head? For many people, talk of artificial intelligence conjures up images of humanoid robots. But robots are only a small subset of artificial intelligence, and humanoid robots are only a small subset of robots. Artificial intelligence is, is much more than that. Also, when many people think about artificial intelligence, they think about it as being something in the future. But the reality is, um, we need to think about all sorts of things. So what about um, personalized agents like uh, Siri on our phones or Alexa in our living room? Or face recognition in passport control? What about automatically identifying uh, tumors in x-rays? Or autonomous vehicles? Or um, de detecting credit card fraud? Or um, other things like that, uh, predictive policing? The point is that these and many other such things are happening now. My area of interest is education. And AI is, is impacting on education in ways that, whether we like it or not, it's been introduced to classrooms around the world. But I'm not talking about robot teachers. The use of AI in um, educational contexts is much less visible than robots, but it's still likely to be transformative anytime soon. Artificial intelligence and education actually comprises software-based systems, most notably the so-called intelligent tutoring systems. Um, intelligent tutoring systems are designed to personalize the instruction to students and giving students their own ways through the learning materials. Intelligent tutoring systems have been uh, designed for more than 30 years, and they're now being introduced into many, many classrooms around the world. They're designed to um, personalize the instruction according to the individual students' capabilities and skills, their strengths and weaknesses. With that, they um, they adapt the materials that they give and, and take the students through um, particular pathways. So what do we mean by um, these intelligent tutoring systems and how they work? Um, they provide the students with uh, particular uh, pathways and instructions through the materials, enabling them to find out what exactly is that the student wants to do, so it responds to what the student does. The students engage with the system, and the, um, the, the system provides them with some, uh, some information, learning activities, and possibly a quiz. Then how the student responds, and the choices they make, the uh, things they click, and the um, responses they give, the, the, the answers they give, and <coughs> determines the next set of information the next set of uh, uh, quiz and information um, that they're given. So these things are you know, pretty amazing. But let's unpack that a little. I like a particular metaphor uh, that involves uh, school buses and Uber taxis. The school bus represents uh, the classroom-based learning. The, all the students are on the same bus together going along the same uh, route to the same school bus destination. On the other hand, intelligent tutoring systems are the Uber taxis. And these Uber taxis take each student along their own personalized route, which sounds amazing, right? The point is that although they do this, and they do this incredibly well, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the right thing that we should be doing. When we get an Uber, I don't actually get the Uber to go to the same bus station as the school bus, because that's really where most of them take us. Instead, I choose an Uber because it takes me to individually where I exactly want to go. With um, the Uber uh, 
an, a, a approach, what we're talking here is about personalized pathways. But the point is, I want to go to my chosen destination, which is different to your chosen destination. What's the point of me getting an Uber taxi that takes me to the same bus station as the bus? But that's the reality of where these things go. Now, the way of looking about this is the contrast between personalized pathways and personalized outcomes. And what I'm interested in is personalized outcomes. Enabling students to um, develop exactly their agency over their own learning so that the students can develop in their own way so that they can be empowered to fulfill their own personalized um, ambitions and potential. Doing what the psychologists call self-actualize. One tool that does this kind of thing is known as uh, an, an app um, comes perhaps surprisingly from China. And this app um, is like a dating app. It connects students with human tutors. Um, enabling the tutors who teach through the app to deliver this personalized information, to deliver this information for the students, to give them their agency. Um, typically, it's for some of the students found difficult in class. Now, in this system, the AI is pretty simple. But the reality is it's the, the students who are in charge. Now, artificial intelligence systems have many other issues. For example, um, they, um, they claim, many claim to unburden teachers um, from things that they don't normally do. But if we're not careful, these intelligent tutoring systems will take away so many burdens from teachers, such as reading student assignments, that the teachers end up being um, the teachers end up being completely taken out of the system. The interaction between teachers and students will not be, um, will be uh, taken out of the uh, learning process and the uh, education is being increasingly uh, dehumanized. Also, AI uh, raises lots of ethical issues um, about uh, AI, so things like um, uh, fairness, accountability, privacy, transparency. So, for example, lots of AI systems um, engage with student emotions. So, they've been designed with the best of intentions to identify a student's uh, negative emotion and to transform it into a positive emotion in order to support enhanced learning. But the reality is this means that a student's innermost feelings are no longer private. These systems also can't handle the interpretive subjects like literature or the other arts. And they don't address things like critical thinking or um, problem solving or creativity. All these systems are actually uh, 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 doing things that are potentially problematic. But there are other approaches that are much better, such as um, AI-driven uh, formative feedback, or exploratory learning environments with AI-driven guidance, or student support chatbots. But I also think the future is quite important as well, and the possible futures. So for example, <clears throat> um, what about instead of teaching students or aiming to do the job of the teacher, we have AI learning companions. So the students get support on their iPhone or whatever that allows them to and get guidance and support to do what they want to do, to learn what they want to learn in ways they want to learn it. Or what about instead of taking teachers out of the teaching process, we have AI assistance for teachers. So again, using a, a, an iPhone or, or, or a, pa um, um, a tablet, the student, the, the information can be given to the teacher to help them get instant um, feedback about their students or connections with other teachers. Um, or to manage their collaborative learning environments. This would enable teachers to take advantage of AI instead of being replaced by AI. My takeaway is that whatever your interests, whether you're in a school, a college, or a university, AI is going to come to a classroom soon, somewhere near you. There is lots of potential, um, but if we're not careful, there's worrying implications as well. 
AI in education is too important to be left to the uh, teachers, sorry, to be left to the computer scientists and entrepreneurs. Instead, we need to take, we need to engage as educators. We need to make sure that um, we think about the ways in which AI can be used in education in positive ways to support teachers and ensure that we always focus on the, uh, the learners, the teachers, and the learning. Thank you very much.